Thank you, each one of you, for coming down here, and if not, not to hear my words, but even out of respect for me. Thank you. But I pray that I might say some words that might have a significant impact on just at least one of you. Yesterday we were talking about it's time for a change. And today, the Lord seems to, I will spend some time with another pastor. We spent several hours together. And see, he's starting to, he's been playing out in the ball field, someplace or in the bandstand, not doing anything for years. Now years ago, he and I used to do stuff together. He invited me as his assistant pastor many years ago. And we used to do stuff. And we were in the game doing stuff together. And so, four years ago, God told me, wake up! And he said, it's time for a change. He said, jump out of the water like Peter did and come follow me. And so I've been trying to keep my eyes on Jesus. And my desire is not to be a pastor. My desire isn't to be a cook. My desire isn't to, to serve the hungry and the homeless. But you know what? My desire is only to be a disciple of Christ. But what did Jesus do? He fed 5,000 people one time. That's just the men plus the women and children. He fed 4,000 people a couple weeks later. And so those are things that Jesus did. What are we doing to make a difference? Well, many of us are sitting on a bandstand. That's like me. I was at a ballpark, a ball game, sitting in the bandstand, watching the baseball or the football game, doing nothing, just watching other people do the work. Well, I'm inviting every one of you to take a chance, take a risk, walk out of that boat, start doing something, be part of the game, be one of the team members, even if you want to be in the background. You know, we still need a bat boy. We still need somebody to bring the water. We need somebody to do a lot of stuff that's behind the scene. And so I'm not asking you to come up here and share the word of God. I'm not coming up here I, I, asking you to come cook some food. I'm not asking you to do anything except what the Lord tells you to do. And I don't know what that is, but we each have a message, message a mission. Now, I know that Alan didn't know, uh, I mean, uh, um, Earl over here, he was doing this Feed the Hungry because that's what the Lord was telling him. And he told me, he said he saw me pulling that wagon, he tried pulling it, and he knew that he had to, he had to help. And so, I don't know what to each one of your message, but he pulled the wagon. How many of you have pulled the wagon? It's a real simple job. You know, I'm almost 61 years old, and I've been pulling this wagon for four years, six days a week. I'm look, I, one day I was walking here, all the way from the, the uh, he saw me at the, at the garage, two miles away, a 29-year-old guy, and he walked me twice. He walked with me all the way. The Lord was telling me, don't, don't ask him. Let my spirit wake up in him. And obviously his spirit hasn't waken up in him. He walked all the way two miles. Well, this 61-year-old guy is pulling 250 pounds all the way here as he's walking next to me. One day, just a few months ago, Maka over here was pulling the wagon by herself. And a man's walking right next to her. And finally she says, why don't you pull this wagon? Now, when do, why does he have to, why does she have to tell another man, Here's a, this lady is so thin and frail, and she's pulling 200 pounds of food. Now she took an action. She took, made a decision to do something differently than she's ever done before. And so I'm just inviting you to do something like you, maybe you've never done before. Get out of the boat like, you know, like Peter did. Take a chance. You know, maybe it's not an easy job, but you know what? Doing something for the Lord is better than nothing. Even if it's the wrong direction, like I said yesterday, even if it's in the wrong direction, inertia, it's easier to change inertia once you got it going than be able to start the process. To get that ball first moving is really difficult. But you know, once it's moving, you can go in the opposite direction and then you can knock it out of the ball field. You can be out in the bandstand and catch it. But see, I'm inviting each one of you to come out of the bandstand, get into the field. This is a real easy ministry. It's not me. This isn't my ministry. I, God is, I didn't even name it. Another, the guy I was with today named it. So this isn't my, I just happen to be a steward of it. And I'm inviting each of you to come step forward. Just pull the wagon. Watch what happens. Every person that's pulled this wagon, something different, spectacular happened in their lives. They've gotten jobs. They've joined the army. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. 
Miracles have happened in everybody's life that has happened. There was one guy that pulled the wagon just, he hated it for five days. And you know, he lived free for two months. He had all new clothes. He had money in his pocket every day. And then he decided to go back to the booze. People gave him money left and right and did things for him just because he was walking with me because he happened to know me. And so the people that knew, knew me tried to help him. And he turned his back on him. Now, I suggest to you, and I invite each one of you, do something, and I just pull the wagon, if nothing else. Help, here, Daniel, he's been telling people for a long time, come help Bob, come help Bob. Today, he said, I'm telling people to help him, and I've never helped him. So he decided to take the effort today, and he helped me today. He helped prepare the soup. And so, miracles can happen once you start doing something. Make a habit of doing something for other people. Don't keep thinking about yourself. You know, when I was out here homeless, all I cared about was myself. Now, as I think about other people, God takes care of all my needs. He's going to take care of all your needs.